Hey everyone, welcome to your third DNA Master tutorial. Today we're going to be showing you guys how to run the auto annotate feature in DNA Master. So in the previous tutorial I showed you guys how to load in your FASTA file into DNA Master which is your whole sequence shown here of your bacteriophage. The next step would be to run the auto annotate feature and this feature is a really awesome feature and what it actually does is read from three different sources of bioinformatic tools. So it looks to Aragorn it looks to GeneMark and it looks to Glimmer, which are three different uh, kind of uh, databases or um, bioinformatic tools that are used to identify genes within a genome when you're giving when you're giving the uh, programs A, T, Cs, and Gs of your sequence. So what it will do is um, go through your whole sequence. All three of these um, different sources will go through the whole sequence, and they will come up with what they believe to be genes. Now they're not all going to agree. But what the program DNA Master does is takes all of those things into consideration and then comes up with just a general consensus. So it combines all three of them and puts them into one. And that's what you'll see here in uh, DNA Master. So unfortunately, it's only about 90% accurate, which is a pretty good number. So um, just know that this process isn't 100% accurate and you're going to have to make some changes, which is the whole point of uh, doing these um, annotations is to just go through it yourself and you know make calls yourself change things around the program is it perfect it's pretty close so just uh, just know that you'll have to make some changes okay so now you have your sequence loaded in and everything you're ready to go so as I showed in last tutorial we're just going to do this step here create from this entry only and this is what we have loaded up so this is what your screen looks like when you're about to run the an auto annotation process so to begin that simply go up to genome and click auto annotate and it will come up with this um, separate window here. So we're going to make a few changes. First thing to know is that uh, you want this selected both analysis analyses combined, combining them as followed, and you want to favor Glimmer calls. So this should be default, but just in case it's not, uh, change those things to match that. Next, we'll go over to the tags and comments tab, and this is um, actually pretty important. I'm going to copy and paste this in the description of this video, and you guys can copy that and uh, paste it into the tags and comments of uh, your DNA master program. What this is pretty much is the different categories of bioinformatic information that needs to be assessed for each phage or each gene. So every gene um, in the genome will have its own separate notes section after we run the auto annotate and in each note section you'll have to put each of the following categories and I'll go through them very briefly here um, in just a second but by writing this in the tags and comments section prior to running the auto annotate will allow this text to show up in every note section of every gene it just saves a lot of time if you put it in here instead of typing it into the note section of each gene as you go along so like I said this will show up if you put it in here it will show up in every note section under every gene and will save you a lot of time so like I said I'm going to go through each uh, category just briefly and in you know future tutorials and um, videos we'll go into more depth about each category but the first one here is the start and stop codon what you'll want to do eventually is um, write the start uh, codon here which is a which is generally ATG that's why I have that here but sometimes it's uh, TTG and GTG so all I would have to do at that point is simply change it um, but ATG is is most common you would also write the coordinate of the um, start so if it, it started at you know base pair 237 you would write 237 that kind of stuff um, same with the stop you would write the stop coordinate the stop codon and if it was a forward or reverse gene so the SD score will be given to you in a window of the program all you would have to do is just copy it down here and it's always negative so I have a little negative sign followed by a comma and you always have to note if it was the best score or not if it was not the best score you would simply just add not best score the SCS section below that is the start site choice. After we run auto annotate, a line of text will appear in the notes section of each gene that will say the start site that GeneMark suggested and the start site that Glimmer suggested. Most of the time they agree, other times they disagree. All you have to do is simply note that in this section. So if you have a start site that agrees with Glimmer and GeneMark, all you would have to do is that. And like I said, that happens most of the time, so that's why I left it as a default as agrees with so the next section is coding potential you can download that off of the phage 
phages db website i'll show you that later the gap is just the gap or overlap between the previous gene and the gene you're working on the lo section or the longest open reading frame is um, all you have to do is simply note if it was the longest open reading frame or not um, obviously if it's not you would change that to no and you would note also the base pairs of that open reading frame that you chose the ST is the starter rater section. It is an outside software that I will show you how to download and everything like that later on. And then the blast section is when you copy and paste your amino acid sequence onto NCBI blast. This is where you will place your result. The F section is uh, probably most important. It's the function. Um, so ultimately all of this stuff leads to the function. So after you have typed all of this stuff in, um, you would eventually look down and, and kind of put everything together. Also, um, with HHPRED and uh, BLASTP and FAMERATOR, you would put all of your evidence together. If all of them are giving you pretty good evidence that it's like a, a tail protein, let's say, then you could piece that all together and list the function as a tail protein. Sometimes they'll disagree, sometimes they won't give you any good results at all. So it's really up to you um, on piecing together your evidence and seeing if the gene that you're working on really has a function that we know of at this point. The FS is the function sources section. This is where you'll list your HHPRED results in this parentheses here. If there's no significant results, you would leave the no significant results there. BLAST-P as well. BLAST is done within DNA Master and BLAST-P is done on the NCBI database. And FAMERATOR is also an outside program that I will show you guys later. So uh, the last thing you may want to put is additional notes section. In this section you want to note anything that may be of interest to the quality control people uh, working on your annotation after you submit it. So if you found an interesting thing in this gene that you may want to just bring up to them or if you uh, did something special to it and found a result uh, for like a function outside of any of these sources you may want to list that there just anything that will help the QC process also this is a good spot to list um, blast results with uh, within the phages DB website so you can actually blast within the phages DB database and this is where I often list that result as well like I said that was kind of brief I just wanted to give you guys a rundown of each category and we will definitely absolutely go into more detail in future tutorials the last thing we do in this tab before moving on to the blast searches tab is change the prefix from DNA M to your phage name so we're gonna say comboy that's the phage name and what that pretty much is going to do is change as you'll see uh, the features tab on the left side after we run the process moving on to the blast searches tab now if you guys have a lot of time say if you have a couple hours two or three hours um, if you're working on a computer that's yours at home or something like that you may want to um, select this box here perform blast search on ncbi database and what this will do is blast all of the genes after it's annotated um, and uh, GeneMark, Glimmer, and Aragorn have come up with a consensus and they decided you know how many genes are in your genome they'll go and they'll blast the amino acid sequences of all of those genes into the database on NCBI and they will um, copy and paste the results into the DNA master program so it's a very very powerful tool it's very useful and it's very helpful but it does take a lot of time so like I said if you are uh, working on a personal computer that you have the time definitely check this box if you um, it's gonna save you time a little bit later you will eventually have to run this but like I said you may not want to do it now it's gonna take a while um, just depending on your situation um, we're personally for the sake of this tutorial not going to check that box actually looking at this now we're gonna change this to 15 hits and that's if you're going to perform the blast so the last thing we're gonna do is head to the automated analyses tab and just hit this button here select no analyses and then we're ready to run um, auto annotate so we're gonna just click the uh, annotate button up here and now this is going to uh, just click yes here and this is going to take a couple of minutes most likely you can check the status of the progress or of the process in the bottom left hand corner as you'll see here predicting genes this is like I said where it's going to these outside bioinformatic tools and piecing them all together, coming to a conclusion, and creating this um, in the program for you. So it will do that with genes, with tRNAs, and um, we'll kind of put your whole genome together. Like I said, it's only 90% accurate. 
you'll see the progress copied here. So parsing genes, it will take a couple of minutes. All right, and there we go. The auto annotation process is complete. This is just a log created by the program to show you uh, what times things happened and everything like that. So we can just close that out and there you go the whole genome is annotated if done so correctly so the last thing I wanted to do for this tutorial I know it's a little long is I wanted to show you guys how to properly save your files in DNA master so let's say we start working on a gene and we we type in the start site here so the start site is 1 and the stop site is 660 so let's say alright we've had enough of that today we're gonna we're gonna save it and we're gonna just uh, close the program out so this is how you uh, save your changes once you're done. So once you're finished working on a gene, you always want to come down here and click post. Get in the habit of posting very often. What that will do is just kind of um, update things. So if you make a change to a start site or a stop site, or if you added something to the notes section, it will update that and it will kind of save that temporarily, but it's not permanently saving to the file. So you're going to post. The next thing you're going to do is go to the documentation tab up here. You're going to recreate the documentation with this button here and click yes. This will take a little bit of time each time, but don't worry. Don't get impatient and close out the program or anything like that because all of your progress will not be saved. <laughs> I've done it a couple times. It's not fun. Um, so once this re is uh, recreated, you'll see uh, a bunch of text pop up and that's when we know we can um, save the file. So DNA Master is a little bit of an older program and it has been known to uh, corrupt some files and uh, just stop working at some point. So it's very imperative that you save um, as frequently as possible and you want to have as many backups as possible. So this means that we're going to create more than one project file for each phase that we're working on. So to properly do this, um, once this is recreated, you want to go to File save as dnam5 file and what you want to do now is save um, wherever you're saving this to you want to create a new folder i'm going to call this one comboy tutorial phage and we're going to create that new folder we're going to go inside of it and we're going to just save it as the name of the phage and start with one and every time you save it you're just simply going to change the file name and just add one to it so that's comboy one so like I said if we were to go back and make another change um, we're gonna post we're gonna recreate the documentation by clicking yes and after it's recreated we're gonna go up to file save as DNA M file and in that same folder we're just gonna add one to the most recent file so we'll just name this comboy two so let's say Comboy 2 gets corrupted here and we can no longer open it. So instead of having to start over from scratch because we can't open our only file, we have a backup here and that's Comboy 1. Every time you make a change, you just save it as a different file. Um, Comboy 1 obviously won't have the changes or the additions made that Comboy 2 had, but it's surely definitely 100% better to pick up from Comboy 1 than it was to start over um, from scratch. So that's how to properly save it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks so much for watching the tutorial and I hope it helped. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.